This is Brownies Podcast. Hey, degenerate! You're listening to Brownies Podcast. Jonathan Brown, Campbell Brown, myself, Dean Thomas, uh, Brody's here, uh, Beck is here, and Dog. We got training before we hit record that we can't say. Certain the O words, word. The yeah. O word. Yeah. It's, because of rights. It's copyrighted. But how good is, is the that sport? Ozempic? Yeah, mm. I think it's Ozempic. <laughs> the sport going on in Paris, we have to call it, and it is bloody unbelievable. Why don't we, John, yes. why don't we call it the Ozempics? We can't stop <laughs> the that. The Ozempics, All right, absolutely. Great. We're not getting in strife for that. The I've Ozempics. been watching a load of Ozempics. How about you? Yes. I got up and watched Arnie. Um, Win, win gold in the 400. Oh, that was magnificent at 450. I didn't realise that she's the second person, only the second woman behind Dawn Fraser to win the same event, two Olympics in a row, Brown. Correct. Really? Yeah, it hasn't, uh, hasn't been done for, you know, 400 free. 80 odd years, but uh, she's a star. And Ariana Titmus we're talking about. Yeah, Arnie. Hey, uh, a a yeah. big, what, what, good Hawks supporter too. You, do you know her well enough to call her Arnie? Yeah, I'm getting her on the podcast. John, have you heard this audio? Have a listen. Hey guys, it's Ariane Titmus here, and here are my top five all-time In hawks. no particular order. They would be Buddy Franklin, Luke Hodge, Sam Mitchell, Surioli, and Campbell Brown. Oh. 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 In Stop no it. particular order. Whoa. Stop it. Yeah, no, big, big Hawks fan and obviously draws a lot of inspiration from the dogs, so oh, wow. that got her through oh, the last the hundred. Dog. Do you reckon that in her last hundred, she's like... What would dog do in this situation? Yeah. Bro, yeah. I think before she leapt off that podium, Campbell's face <laughs> flashed in her eyes. Put off. Well, That's... because famously, Clarko, at half time yes. of the 2008 grand final, I believe, referred to a shark. So there is a relationship between aquatic sports mm -hmm. and, uh, well, not, maybe not aquatic sports, but what happened at 2008 half time, That's dog? That's right. And she smelt blood in the water uh, on uh, in the 400 and she just ah. gobbled him up. It was magnificent, JB. Titmus. Yeah. Uh, the Ozempics are amazing. Seriously. Who in this room said no one would watch it? Was it you, John? No, I don't think so because it works out perfectly, doesn't it, from a time point of view? Like sitting up every evening, um, you get all the morning events. Last night I watched... Liv goes to school. One of her classmates was in the Olympics. So Chloe Chloe Cavell last night, a fourteen year old representing Australia in the in the skateboarding in the street section of the skateboarding. She was one of the favourites going in, but she finished eighth. But geez, how cool is that? Watching one of your classmates. She's a lovely girl. Um, so she got out and had a crack. That was pretty amazing. And Jess Fox won last. When you woke up this morning, you see the finals. Jessica Fox, who was our flag bearer. Oh yeah. She actually won in the K kayak slalom. All these events we never watch, except for once every four years. But when the kayak slalom comes around, that, that in particular is a, a great sport. watch. You get a great deal of pride when you wake up and an Australian's won a, a, a Zimpic gold, don't yeah. you? It's, it's magnificent. Good Absolutely. patriotism in a, in a time where I reckon we need bonding. I do too. And you well, you love watching the Ozempic, so it can't have been I, you that claimed that no one watches me. it. I'll tell you what I, I found unbelievable. Yes. Some of the commentators of some of the sports. Who we got? So Sammy McClure is doing... The surfing. Yes. Right? Wait a minute. Which, which is surprising. I mean, he does, he does go down to Bells and catch the odd wave every now and oh, then. Okay, yeah. okay. I'll take that back. I can't imagine Sam McClure, John, talking about being in the green room. Well, it's interesting. Uh, Sam's rocking an interesting haircut at the moment, the old slick back. Uh, it's a very good point you make, Brown Dog, though, because i tell you what I thoroughly enjoyed the other night when the women's three-metre springboard synchronised, synchronised diving came on. What happened? And the great Mark... Tubby Taylor was what? the play-by-play -play commentator. Now, what? I don't think Tubby's seen a springboard since the grade six bombing competition back in Wagga when he grew up. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, that was good stuff. Beck, uh, was it you that claimed that no one watches the Olympics? Can't have been. What do you mean? I'm such a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, right, what is bet. wrong with you? First with Kiss, claiming that Kiss was sh grand final, and now that no one watches the Ozempics? I just think there is a portion of society who aren't really that interested in the Ozempics. And I, I will say, there's some events that I go, hang on a minute, I could probably do that. No, I could, could probably you be... You couldn't do anything. What about, what about the... What is it, the decathlon where there's 10 events and it's shooting, jumping, that's awesome. running, Mate, javelin. That's, I'm like, hang on a minute. probably the hardest sport no. to, to win... Uh, gold oh, awesome. There's no way they're good at all of them. There's no, like the eight of them they're yeah, making bro, it up. What is wrong with That's you? the modern pentathlon. So the decathlon is actually all on the track. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I can't say 
track, the Ozempic track. Yeah, well, Dino, you said it before bleep, as well. We're going to have to beat that out. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what I've really enjoyed, the equestrian <laughs> oh, brand, though, yeah. because, again, another famous commentator who knows he's a quest, <laughs> oh, knows, knows his dressage yeah. especially better than none. Wait, wait, yeah, wait the, let me get the a drum roll. The former me, captain me... of the Fremantle Dockers. What? <laughs> Matty Pavlich. You are talking <laughs> No, mate. Matthew Pavlich <laughs> is commentating the equestrian. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He What's is. happening? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's <laughs> unbelievable. That's it's unbelievable. astonishing. What, I think, do they get? Is this all written into their contracts? Uh, well, actually, we've got the same manager as Matty Pavlich, Brown Dog, oh. so... <laughs> What's going on? Surely we could have got something written in the contract for the Olympics. I reckon we need to find a sport and over the next four years really fine-tune our skills (laughs) and go to LA in 2028. Yes, bro. Yes. So we can't play any... We can't play Pavlich doing the equestrian. Oh, damn. We can't. Oh, Imagine man. Pav on the dressage. So obviously they've got the open field equestrian. Uh, they've got the show jumping, and then they've got the dressage. I, I'm going to be now if it's three o'clock in the morning. I'll be setting the alarm <laughs> clock just to listen to Matthew Pavlich <laughs> talk me through the dressage step. <laughs> <laughs> It's hey, um, Simone Biles, I was watching last night. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah, she's back. It's great to see her back because she's, she's widely known as the GOAT. She's the greatest gymnast that's yes. ever been on the planet. But in Tokyo, yeah. she had some issues. She was losing focus in the air, mm. which became quite dangerous due to, I think she had a lot going on in her life. Yep. And well, the other thing it was too, Brown Dog, she alluded to the fact that the stands were empty. Remember, yeah. that was the COVID Olympics, so no one was allowed oh, in the stands, right. so it was just black. And her parents yeah. weren't there. The parents would zoom in and watch, and, and she yeah. she quit. She quit after just a couple of Everyone events. Everyone sacks on her after she quit. Yeah, and she went away, and no one thought that uh, she would be able to come back. You know, it was, it was quite a major... Uh, retirement from from the sport, unexpected, but she's back bigger and better than ever. But it turns out some bad sh** happened to her. That's oh, there was why a lot she... of bad shit going and, on. And now she's and killing. She's like a, a little pocket dynamite, isn't she? She's, she's, she's I think she's married to an NFL player too, Brown Dog. So she met the Brown Dog progeny coming too. through. Bread in the purple, that's another powerful. You also know you're good when they start naming moves after you. They yes. just call it the bile. I'm yeah, like, that's yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty boss. You on your Instagram, you were cuddling her. What the hell? I wasn't cuddling her, but I, I, I did. Uh, I did meet her on Media Row uh, at the um, Super Bowl a few years ago. Mm. Yeah, she's, Struck up quite a report. Doesn't her husband play for a team or is a retired player? Yeah, no, I think, I think he's yeah. still an NFL player. Yeah. yeah. So she's a start. Uh, John, yes, yeah. before we it's move on from the Ozempics. Uh, uh, yeah, well, the Ozempic. I just thought I'd make special mention for uh, Bob Ballard. Um, so Bob would certainly have post Ozempic <laughs> anxiety at the moment. So not post podcast uh, anxiety. Cause What's happened? Bob was actually on the main. Call um, yeah. during the during the swimming, and he thought he'd just add on after our women won the four by one hundred meter freestyle relay. Fantastic ever by Molly O'Callaghan, Shana Jack, Emma McKean, and Meg Harris. Yeah. Well, well, Bob was not happy with how tardy they were before uh, heading up towards the dais, and he said, "Well." The women are just finishing up, and you know what women are like? Just hanging around, doing their makeup. Oh, yeah, that was... Stood down. He got what? stood down yeah. being a chauvinist. What a dickhead! Yeah. That's he what was he's stood down. <laughs> when they came back from the medal right. presentation, Bob was no longer... Bob <laughs> had exited the commentary is, box. Is Bob an older man? Is Bob, Bob an older man? Yes. Yes. He's, what, 50, I reckon? He's oh, the 50s. He's yeah. not in his 70s. He's not Mel right? Right. But he's from another time. Bob. Um, yeah, Bob was sent backing, so uh, one day in, oh, Bob Ballard's been sent back to England. It's been a great yeah. start, and right, I'm hey. looking forward to the remaining couple of weeks. There was did, hey, did you think it was Peter Hall when that guy jumped into the pool? Did you think it was that famous pitch invader when one of the girls, the, an American girl, dropped her swimming cap in the pool, and this random bloke just comes out of nowhere with these dick togs, not in great shape, walks <laughs> along the pool deck, and then jumps into the pool to retrieve this swimming cap. It was astonishing. <laughs> and he was one of the marshals, and obviously they can't have the athletes going back into the water to pull it out. So they said they looked around, and there's a marshal, and in fairness, the boy's not in the best of shape, and so he's straight got his off. T- and he's, <laughs> well, he's trained off. He's got the tightest <laughs> dick hogs you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh my god! And then, unfortunately, the belly's hanging over the top of it, and then he's got to dive in. But yeah. he's, it's like a slow walk <laughs> to the top the of crowd the. Went wild. Oh mate, they're going ballistic. It's like a lifeguard for goggles and. and um... <laughs> it was. <too. laughs> All right, that is we, astonishing. We love the Olympics, so we've got All so right. much footy to talk about. Yep. So Carlton have gone down.
Does that give everyone hope that they're beatable? Also, they're going to be careful not to lose their second chance, John. Well, the problem is their midfield. So they're, they've lost some cylinders. They've got some cylinders down in the engine room at the moment, Brown Dog, and that's their issue. Cripple is well held by Willem Drew, the boy from Croyd, the Croyd Flyer, Earl, like saying his 100th game, did a great job. Sammy Walsh has had a pretty ordinary month, and I'm not sure where Adam Cherry is. And, of course, Tom DeConing was injured last week with that punctured lung. So... The, and Blake Akers wasn't there. So there's a massive concern on the Carlton midfield at the moment. And can they correct it before this final series starts? Well, they need to, don't they? Because, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're dropping away at the, the wrong <laughs> Winning, Winning a premiership's all about timing your run well. Yeah, it you is. Know? And um, yeah. it doesn't matter if you, you start off the season in the first 10 or 12 rounds fantastically. You've got to have that momentum and be playing your best footy and have a healthy list in the back end of the season, which is now. Mm. Um, and we've seen the Sydney Swans drop right away. We've seen Essendon fall off a cliff. From third to And your, your Friday fire-up just didn't work. Yeah, and, John. And oh, the Essendon supporters Jeez. agreed with you, JB. <laughs> yeah. Beck, did they? Yeah, what do they, they say? Did, they and now Carlton are, uh, are the, the team that are just starting to waver a little bit, which is giving all those sides their, uh, their top four so Bombers, second chance uh, options in jeopardy. Bombers went from third to tenth in two weeks. It's <laughs> wild. Beck, what are, what are the fans saying? Have they got confidence in their own team? No, they actually agreed with Brownie and they actually thought he was going to have a oh, heart geez. attack in the TikTok. So, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, well, well, what sort of comments are we talking? Uh, they said 100% as an Essendon fan, we need to stop making excuses. Yeah. Yeah. And Frauds, they called them, didn't they? Jesus. Yeah. It was, uh, they, they, they abused them as they were coming down the race. Oh, there that's at a bit much. Yeah. You're going to get behind the supporter that threw a scarf. Threw yeah. a scarf. I love that. the ground. The security guard retrieved it and then he threw it back <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want oh, the scarf. I, well, clearly, Brad Scott either didn't play that audio to mm. fire up the troops. Yeah. Um, or hey, did we get any feedback back about how often. Uh, I'm fond of referring to the 2001 Grand Final and how we, you know, Essendon have been cooked ever since. Do they give me any feedback about that reference? No, we need more. We, we need more of that. We need to remind Essendon, like, of their past. John, you roll that out. I've seen you roll that out at sportsmen's lunches, at corporate, corporate occasions, ever yeah, since well. Brisbane f- them, he said. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dana. <laughs> It's the truth. They've been pear shaped. Um, uh, no, okay, so no, Port Adelaide. Congratulations, Brody. We uh, all mocked you the other day, so we should owe him a. <laughs> Not one of you. Today. Not one of you gave us a chance. And geez, it actually looked pretty grim at half time. But then the boys came out. They played with a bit of heart for the good man that is Kenny Hinkley. Kenny oh, Hinkley, you are the biggest turncut. I'd hate to be married to you. Uh, <laughs> You'd stab me in the back. You'd yeah. take me for everything I've got. Exactly. Because uh, you are two-faced. Has you your... wanted Ken Hinckley's head for the last 18 months. Has your wife got a prenup? Brides. Because if your wife doesn't have a prenup, <laughs> I'd be very concerned. <laughs> Mate, Port are coming. Are they not? No, they're a good star. They're, they're, on their night, they're a really good side. And they've got some, some weapons. Big Charlie Dixon. I know he didn't have a great night Friday night, but he provides a presence up there. I liked Radagalee going forward. Yes. You're right, Dog. Yeah, he provides a presence. And at the end of the day, if Weedering had a plan on Radagalee, Radagalea probably doesn't get a kick, so you're right. He takes the best but, opponent every week. What do you think about the Swans? Are they? Is there concerns of the Swans? So not hitting any of the panic buttons, Johnny Longmire said three or four weeks ago, but mm. lost four out of their last five, mm. and now they start, they're start. they just struggling to score. 48 points yesterday. Yeah, well, there's no Papley, obviously, for the remainder of the home and away season. Um, big The big Amadi party, uh, he's been a gate crasher Ooh, like uh, for the last five or six weeks. Ever since he kicked his bag of nine, he's <laughs> yes. hardly got a kick since then. Obviously, side's putting a little bit more time into him. Can um, someone bring up their run and, home? And their Dane yeah, Rampy, got... I don't think, played on the weekend. So, yeah, they've just got some issues. They're not winning um, the footy as, as much uh, through the midfield. Well, they got a little buffer, a six-point buffer. Yeah, Let's they'll, see they'll their last four games. Top, which reckon? is fine, but it's just, it's just that they're not as uh, bulletproof as we thought they were a few weeks ago. The two best sides in the comp leading into this week remain Brisbane and the Hawks. That is wild. Oh, sh- What's their run home for Swans? Bro? They play Port this weekend oh. in Adelaide. Big game. They yeah, play Collingwood big. at the SCG, and it. then they take on Essendon at Marvel. Oh. Okay. I right. should win that. There might be one other game, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, 24, is 
Yeah, it's not coming up in my app at the moment. Oh, so fair just, interesting, interesting. Okay, anyway, we'll we'll uh, find that out. I'm sure Brady will get someone's phone. <laughs> she works. What's going on there? Mate? Call yourself a producer. No, I think yeah, uh, it's unfair. It's one to watch. But, yeah, it's funny because Sydney four weeks ago, Sydney did not have an injury to their best. I would say twenty five brown dog. Yep, which is very un- unusual, isn't it? So. That, if you actually look, I looked at that a few weeks ago, and that was like, not alarm bells to me, but it got my attention. And I thought, that's unlikely to happen for the rest of the year. And clearly, they've run into injury problems to keep players. Started with McInerney last week. Yep. Then Papley. Hayward's clearly carrying a little bit. So, some of their better players are not actually out there now. And you fall into the trap of going, oh, well, that's the reason we haven't been playing well. When we get them back... It'll all just click and we'll, we'll get back to way, the way we were. But that's not always the case when an injured player comes back into the lineup. It, it, it doesn't all just immediately fix the issues that you've got. Yep. One player doesn't Spot make on. It. And the big three are not firing like they were. Heaney, Goulden and Warner. Like Warner. Warner's had a pretty ordinary five or six weeks. The other two have been spasmodic, hey! to say the very least. I love to hear um, that, brother. Also, a quick apology too for not getting temerity into the call because one of our producers at Fox reminded me on Saturday that remember to get temerity into the call and he said I'll remind you during the game and he didn't he didn't remind me wait a minute my my takeaway is there that your producer will let us engage in horseplay Absolutely. He oh. enjoys it. He's a big listener of Brownie's podcast. Alex Jesus. up here on the Gold Coast. So, what about um, what about on the couch big... tonight? Can we expect to see it John. rolled out? It's on the couch, honestly. John. It's the couch. Come on. John. Okay. How can we get Temerity in? Which oh. which in relation to which team? Um well, it's gotta be Hawthorne because they're on the charge. Okay. Give me the comment then. Give me the, the context. So we had well, the temerity to question Sam Mitchell's credentials after the first six weeks of the season. What does it mean and, again? And don't we look silly? <laughs> no, that's, excessive, that's, that's, excessive confidence that is exactly, or very bold. That is exactly... No, no, no. It's more. Hawthorne, their temerity has got them in a position where they can make a real charge in September. I'm not sure that's okay. the way. I, I, Come on! I never... I never the I you, have the, you have the temerity to abuse, you know, a, a grade of the game. It's yeah. The, the audacity. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's the how front. I mean. Yeah. John, yeah. however you yeah, say that's it. That's the way I see it as well. I see it more like you, Brown Dog, than Dino. So Piss I off. probably need some clarity on Kiss my ass. the actual meaning <laughs> and the definition of temerity before I roll with it. Cause <laughs> hey, hey, just let's just whatever, <laughs> whatever you see fit, whatever feels right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Scott at Pendlebury coming yes. up for game number 400 this week. What an uh, ambassador to the game. What a freak. Unbelievable. Still playing great football. Like yeah. he, um, he had 22 and kicked a beautiful goal. They subbed him out just to sort of rest him up for this week. He's re-signed for next year. What? So he's getting at least another 20... Two plus games in, mm. I, I think, I think he goes on and breaks the record. Does he take a haircut for that contract? Is oh, it year by year? At, at that age, you, you don't really yeah. care about money. You just right. you're looking towards just longevity and. and I think you still want to play. Like, I, I think I had a half. I, I was about fifty percent haircut uh, doing over the last right. couple of years. Now the club would probably say I should have took more considering <laughs> what happened those last couple of years. But um, Pendle, Pendles is he'd still be well remunerated. The salary cap's gone up, but you're right. He just wants to keep playing, and while his body's fit and healthy, he'll continue on. Remember his job he did, especially in that last forty-five minutes of the grand final last year. I agree with you, Brown Dog. I think. I think he's the first player to get to 450. His yeah. resilience has been Jesus. amazing. So he would need you think to that's play. probably a full season. So go, bro. Three uh, so Bruma Harvey holds the record at 432 games. Yeah, so he'd need to see another two seasons. Another two seasons to break that record, barring any you know injuries where he misses games. Right, interesting. A of finals, in one word. Which helps him. In one word, Will Collingwood mm. make the finals, dog? Oh. I think if they do... They're going to be dangerous. Do you know they run home? No. Let me give it to you. <clears throat> Carlton, Swans, Brisbane, Melbourne. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough, isn't it? Um, John? I think they missed them. Uh, I, I, um, it's a hard one because I, I think Hawthorne are definitely going to go in, but I, I just can't see any of the other teams. So I'm talking about the teams outside the eight at the moment. At the moment, we've got Hawthorne North, Essendon 10th, Melbourne, Collingwood, Gold Coast. So put a line through... Gold Coast. I just don't see Essen and Melbourne and Collingwood playing well enough mm. to be able to unseat either Western Bulldogs or Port Adelaide uh, or Hawthorne, who they're obviously going against. So that would be my logical conclusion. Dog. And they only beat Richmond yesterday. And Richmond, yeah. 
Richmond has no players at the moment. Doc, so, your boys in the last four games, you've you got Richmond and North in your last yeah, four yeah, games. Yeah, I know. No, you're, we, you're playing finals. Just need to win one of the next couple, which is either uh, GWS or Carlton. Carlton. And if we can win one of those, you'd think they'll win the last two, which means they'll definitely play finals. But there was a, there's, a, there's a famous quote out there, yeah. and, it, and it goes along the lines of, sometimes wood will float for a bit, mm. then it will sink. Mm. This type of wood is called Collingwood. <laughs> that's hot yes. stuff. That's hot that's stuff. Best, that's stuff. Oi, um, I'm obsessed no, at looking good. at Run Homes out. Oh, yeah? There's only yeah. four weeks the last to go. Four weeks of the season. So let's go to Frio now, who are flying. They are flying. Most improved player in the competition, JB, Josh Tracy. Would you say that he is in the <clears> discussion? I love him. I can certainly. He can start. If you look at the last, let's say from. Round 11 onwards, I think it is, Brown Dog, where every team has played nine games. Tracy's in the conversation as the most impactful key position player in the competition, along with Jesse Hogan uh, and Jamara Hagen. No question about that. All right. Dockers. Bombers. Win. Cats. Tough. GWS. Tough. Port. Should yeah, win. They've got a is tough one home. My point is, Dockers, their second chance is not guaranteed. No, no, no one's is, really. Sh- for the Swans, so they're not going to drop out of the top no. couple, but the rest is up in the air, and it's it's a bloody great season. Oh my god! When you've got oh. upsets and you've got still twelve or thirteen sides competing for what will be the top eight, yeah. and I think it's as good a season as I can remember. John, well, you're right because every week you look ahead, and I suppose we're so used to because we're. <clears throat> Commentators in the big league, me and you, Brown Dog. Wow. Especially your performance the last. Half. <laughs> well, mate. I was back yeah, to box on the weekend. Was, oh, it, yeah. was, it, was it cold, bro? Oh, oh. It, was, it was stunning commentary. I watched the entire thing. I was like, <laughs> this you... is so grim. What do you do with your weekend where you watch the entire thing? Uh, there, does it seem, can you explain to me, is there any form to the VFL commentary? They just kind of talk wherever they see fit and they just kind of fill space for the sake of it like oh yeah so what have you been up to yeah you know yeah. oh yeah he's got the ball going 50 yeah How not much mate yeah <laughs> kids going all right um dog was um, it cold out there boxer much. was i'm sorry uh, John, what were you going to say? Sorry for referring back to a brown dog. Uh, I knew it was going to be a stacks on, but you look you, 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 every weekend. You look ahead and you go, "Oh, geez," because at this stage of the year, there might be four or five just dog sh- games. Yep. But I've already looked ahead to just this weekend alone in terms of meaningful games. Yeah. Bulldogs Melbourne Friday night. Jesus. Carlton Collingwood Saturday night. Port Sydney Saturday night. Giants Hawthorne Sunday what? in Canberra. Essen and Frio Sunday, and St Kilda Brisbane the Sunday twilight. So you've got six games with a huge amount of interest and finals implications around them. So footy's in a great shape. Ads back in a second. Welcome back to Brownies Podcast at Brownies Podcast. You can follow us on TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. John, you want to go back to the Ozempics for a second? The Ozempi- I'm not sure what the ratings are like at the moment, but a lot of people would be watching, of course. It's interesting stuff, even though three quarters of the events you'd only watch once every four years. Um, but the opening ceremony um, it was a bit of a tough watch. It was done differently the first time the opening ceremony was done outside of the Olympic Stadium. and I disagree it was a tough watch. I thought it was a game changer. Well, I thought that surely they should have watched the AFL Grand Final Parade from two years ago down the Yarra River and, and, and realised that that was an absolute disaster. It just stuck to tried and true policy and stuck to the Olympic Stadium because it didn't look that great down the river scene or sane. How do you pronounce it? I don't know, but you <laughs> sounded you think, great. Brando, it, great. Yeah, it was, it was tough because it was pouring with rain, so they didn't get the conditions to suit. thought Celine Dion was fantastic. Oh, so good. They did so come up, good. They did come up with some Celine. absolute tripe on, on, uh, on the opening ceremony, which we won't touch on, but it was just garbage. <laughs> and Gaga was terrible. <laughs> I think I think you're all lost your mind, and I thought it was unbelievable how they combined the city and music and art, and you're all idiots. Back back me up, if you will. Ah, uh, well, I loved it until the speeches, because that's when I got too tired and I yeah. knocked out. So the well, speeches suck. Yeah, there was, there was there was like a reenactment of the Last Supper. Uh, with some interesting characters. And as a Christian just, man, you were deeply as a, offended. As a good Christian man, <laughs> I was uh, I was turning in my plot. Hey, um, so the D's. Had sixteen thousand people. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. I was actually 
angry at the TV when I saw it. I'm like, they complain about not having been over there to see their team play oh in the grand final. 16,000 in a essentially make or break finals yes. game. Do you know any Melbourne supporters at the moment? Any friends of yours? Yeah, Brody, yeah they the don't go. It they is Croden Kelly. Kelly. It is quintessential Melbourne yeah. supporter behaviour. Mm. As soon as they're not in the race for finals, yeah. uh, no one goes. Yes. It's cold here in Melbourne. So Was there a just, snow dump? Is there was a snow, snow dump. Yeah, Hotham. Hotham apparently got the snow dump. So and um and Europe's been calling. You know the uh, the, the yes. beach clubs of, of Scorpio and um <laughs> on, and Mykonos. Over Mykonos. There, you know. I'm trying to call <laughs> Broden to see if he can justify the <laughs> support for his team if he picks up because they haven't they haven't teed him up. Hello. Hey, Broden. Yes. It's Dino from Brownies Podcast and Jonathan and Campbell, and we're all here. Yes. How you going, brother? Are we on the air? Yes. 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 Yeah. You damn punk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're just teeing off on your mob and the fact that you got 16,000 fans to a game when and now more than ever, you need support to make the finals. Mm. Please defend that <laughs> attendance. No, I can't. It's completely unacceptable. We want to flag what? More recently than your team, Dino, yes. than yours, Brownie, than yours, mm. other Brownie. <laughs> like, it's... it's um. It's truly. I, I don't even. I was there, mm-hmm. and I and, and I was. I thought I was at like a VFL game. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the, and the Olympics weren't even that good yet, to be honest. Like, I, don't, no. I genuinely don't know where anyone was. <laughs> Mate, well, uh, you obviously haven't seen Tubby Taylor's commentary on the <laughs> synchronized diving, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you... that has been. Yeah, that has, that did, that's kept me up all night, to be honest. <laughs> did you know we've got Tubby Taylor doing that? We've got Matthew Pavlich doing the equestrian, and we've got Sam McClure doing the surfing. Were you across all this? No, when when Matthew Pavlich came up and was giving me updates on horses and their hooves, <laughs> I was. I thought Channel 9 has gone too far. <laughs> uh, mate, sorry about just surprising you with this phone yeah. call. Thank you for your uh, words. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Can I, how do we feel about Brisbane, Brownie? Oh, I just think they've, they've, they've gone to another level because they've had all the injuries at the start of the year. They've blooded all these young blokes and they're winning close games as well. They're, they're tougher than they were last year. They've won close games and they've got... The oldest coach, but the most experienced campaigner in the competition in fake. So I'm backing him in, mate. Can I let you in on a real, on a, on a legitimate secret, right? Yes. From the guy who brought you show a bit of f- fight on the Amazon Prime series, Stewie Jew. He gets fired. He goes and immediately yes. joins the Australian cricket team who retain the Ashes and win the yes. international test series. He comes back. You know, he, he came on board mid-year this year. And what happened immediately? Yeah. Turn them they around. Okay. What about the other? I was calling that game, bro. And they they crossed to him. They showed him mm. in the commentary box for the opposition. No, not the commentary, in the coach's box. Mm. And the whole crowd started booing. Did they? Dogs. Yeah, what, what a disgrace. Dogs. No good. Broden, uh, we hope your team can make the eight. Um, it's looking pretty grim. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> it's, it's that's looking, good gear. It's looking grim, John. One more. Is there still regret, though, that you weren't in with Bowden? Babbage. Babbage. <laughs> and Burbank. Burbank. And Babcock. is there still regrets out there? Because I know obviously people would have looked at it and said, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But now that it looks like Melbourne's missed the window, do you actually risk, wish you had to spend six months in a jail cell just to see that and be live for <laughs> that question. Melbourne premiership? Absolutely. I, sh- I should have flown over there, just thrown some haymakers at the border and got in. I, we got a really, you know, a genuine, I feel good about that premiership because I don't think any other Victorian teams, like, could have gone interstate and won a game. You know, all this Vic bias stuff, you know, it's a really hard thing to win one interstate, and we got one. So I feel good about it, even though I watched it on the telly. Broden, yes. we love your work, and thank you for having a Stop yarn. Stop signing me off, Dino. Oh, hey. every, every, you keep yeah. signing me off, and we keep having good chats. <laughs> um, should have been Babbage, Burbank, and Kelly. It should have. The three. Uh, we love you, and The Footy is an amazing podcast that has way more listeners than ours, and people should get on board because it's great. No, no, mate. It. It's, it's, it's quality, not quantity, though, Dino. And your <laughs> audience, you go hard. Uh, see you, man. Bye, Ciao. Thanks, See you, mate. Uh, let's go to the derby Oh, there was, there was shades of uh, Dale Kickett. Remember his big melee oh. back, in the, back in that day? Yeah. Uh, it just kicked off halfway through the third quarter. And I, and I love the fact um, that all the players got involved. 
There was 18 um, MRO charges, $34,375 worth of fines for engaging in Malay. It was great, wasn't it? Jesus, that's a bit. That's amazing. Oh. That tail kick it. Oh, I was um, there. Situational footage was unbelievable at the time, wasn't it? Well, John, like, at the he time, he knew he was it was his last year, and he just did. Yeah. He didn't give one, f- and he just yep. kept swinging and swinging. There's one difference between him and Alistair Lynch is also in his last game, <laughs> 2004 grand final. Dale connected with all 10 of his punches. <laughs> Lynch missed with all 10 of his punches. <laughs> and sometimes you need a player to re-spark a rivalry, mm. right? And he, uh, yes. Har- Harley Reid is that guy. Yes! He, he, he's bullish. He loves physical contact. He got stuck into a couple of Dockers boys. They got stuck in him back. He slung one to ground, gave away a free kick, and all of a sudden it was on for young and old. There is nothing better than seeing when you see, like, you know, when there's one scuffle, everyone's like, oh, that's not bad. But when there's 10 different scuffles and everyone's yes. partnered off with their opposition. Spot fires. Spot fires when they're playing yeah. on, you know, they might be playing on their midfield and go, that's it. Yeah. I'm going for him. Oh, it is great. And when the ball actually stops, they're like, well, we can't, we can't do anything when there's. 24 of them that are absolutely going at it. Oh, wild shit. There's it still a good place for it in the game. 100%. Absolutely. Um, ads back in a second. Welcome back to Brownie's podcast. Uh, now, we said we'd call Rick today because last podcast we made a meal out of our various sources. Like, degener- degenerates are helping us with the podcast, giving us bits of info. Yes. But we did not get one credit right last time. So Rick's got his knickers in a knock. So we should call him and apologise, I guess. Yeah, cool. we, we can call Rick. But, uh... Yeah. If this is the Brownies podcast, people, check your goddamn messages. I've left 4,000 to say I'm sick and I can't come on. Jeez, he sounds sick. <laughs> Get well soon, Rick. All the, oh, all the rest, best pickle dick, Rick. <laughs> I shouldn't have said he's, that. <laughs> Time for should is not Rick have our Godfather or consigliary. I can't remember, and I love I Rick so much, and I respect him, and he. I hope he gets well. Time for what a world! Now, the great thing about the Olympics is that uh, it, it, it shines a light on countries where quite often we just bury our head in the sand and we don't really mm. um, worry too much about what goes on over mm-hmm. there. Now, North Korea is always a contentious topic because it's it's been ruled by Kim Jong-un and intensified by his son Kim Jong-un and a 2024 report of North Korean human rights based on testimonies from 649 defectors that have left the country reveals a disturbing case involving a 22 year old man from South Huanghe province uh, he was publicly executed for listening to 70 South Korean songs he watched three films and and distributed them, violating a 2020 North Korean law against reactionary ideology and culture. What? Now, now they've banned K-pop over there to the broader community, right? Because they believe that it's negative influence on Western culture. Okay, so anyone caught listening to or watching any of the capitalist fashion and hairstyles, skinny jeans, t-shirts with foreign words, and dyed and long oh, hair will face the wrath of Kim Jong-un. And um, <clears throat> this young man, he got caught and he got executed. Jesus. Jeez. So, what a world. Stupid bit unlucky. Yeah, man. wouldn't like to live over there in North Korea would anytime you, soon. Uh, would you visit it, North Korea? I, I don't think I would unless I had absolute <laughs> immunity. Uh, I, I would need to be given an assurance that I would be safe. Yeah. Um, I'd have no problem meeting Kim Jong Un. I mean, he runs a, a very strong. Well, Dennis program. Rodman was going, mate. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry. This but, lunatic just said he runs a very strong program. But how what offensive? Is wrong with your how mind? offensive, right? Because we were watching the the opening. <laughs> we we're watching the opening ceremony, yeah. and I don't yeah. think there can be a a, a bigger error yeah. for a, a radio announcer mm. to introduce South Korea oh. as. North Korea. North and Korea, that's what yeah, happened, yeah. Uh, the opening mistake. ceremony. But, oh, wow. Which is quite a big one because those two are very, very different type of operators. And shout out to Kim Jong-un, who runs a real tight program. <laughs> <laughs> tight program. And his son, Kim Jong-un. Is that right? <laughs> who's who's yeah, apparently yeah. madder than Kim Jong-un. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a bit like Mel Brown. <laughs> <Campbell> Brown. <laughs> uh, see you later, degenerates.